join me on my 36-hour round-the-world trip to the headquarters of Visma Lisa bike I had meetings but got to catch some glimpses of these pretty cool bikes along the way met up with some old pals that you'll be familiar with before a very cold journey back home in Andorra busy day today birthday boy and got a lot on flying out tonight this is gonna be a long vlog First, I had a photo shoot because I was being interviewed, or I was interviewed for the Weekend Australian. Not sure when that will be coming out, but that was really fun to do. Just a different thing to experience. Photo shoot done. Had to take, took an hour and a half. Real photography and real like traditional media stuff is much more serious. Or like, I had to smile and stuff. And they actually take a million photos. When you post something on Instagram, take one photo with your phone and bang, it goes up. <laughs> Bang, photo finish. Lawrence Pity, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Happy birthday, dear Peak sport watching, watching the West Indies test match. <laughs> test cricket is peak sport. But second cracked test match, England India. I was talking shit about Hartley. He's just taken five for, and ripped out off stumps. So uh, England looking good. After this, we go straight into Sinner against Medvedev. It looks like Medvedev's choking. So I haven't moved from this couch in about six <laughs> hours. <laughs> Time to go. Just checked in for the flight. Bonus, saw the West Indies cricket team. They're just behind me. Said to Braithwaite, congrats on the win, fellas. What a game. So there you go. What an end of the trip seeing the Windies team. They were, they were so tired, I reckon they've been on the piss. You think I went crazy about the Windies cricket team? The security, Australian security, <laughs> the guys was like LR. I was like, I thought I was about to get arrested. <laughs> it's actually just a fan of the channel, the Australian Border Force. So, get me on the show, I say. I'm deliberating about whether to hit the lounge or not. It's just up there. That's like, if I go in now, I'm just going to sit down. It's got less fresh air up there. It's like got a high density of people. I could just sit here on the main concourse and got more space to myself. And I got snacks. Got snacks right there. I know they're not free, but when you're about to fly, you don't need a big feed bag long haul because they feed you up, boy. And you know what this vlog's about, getting lean. So we're gonna get some steps in. We've been light on the steps recently. Got to Garmin going. We've got to get stepping. Now I'm gonna take a conference call with Yumbo or Visma Rada, Visma Lisa bike in the concourse about the classics. So if if Vanderpool's listening, we're in trouble. Right, Yumbo meeting done, that killed 45 minutes pretty quick. Uh, boarding in half an hour. But I ain't paying for free water. Let's get some let's get some sparkling down there. We've got to stay hydrated. We got a long haul. We got traveling for 36 hours here, team. Stay with me. We're keeping hydrated. The flight called people to board, but they're not boarding yet. And now there's massive queues. Not smart. Flight movie selection is, is crucial. I went with Collateral. Haven't watched it in a long time. And then Shooter. This is the first long haul flight I ran with two movies. Both I'd watched before. They would entertain me, but they wouldn't challenge me. Then Butcher's Crossing I put on and turned off because that Nicolas Cage movie was so bad. Got some laps in. Gotta stay mobile. I was going to sleep after about five hours on this flight. Watched a bit of racing I had stored on my laptop, but I've already forgotten what happened. So probably wasn't the smartest idea. Flight one, done. Into Doha. Just got off flight number one. No travel later. We've got to get the extra steps in. It's good I got these steps in, but i got to have a shower. I smell like shit. So we got to, we got to get to this gate. The cricket stuff just gets more ridiculous. Just saw Justin Langer in Doha Airport. Freaked him out. Just shouted your goat at him. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> just just laying and cruising around. What's going on? Time for flight two. 
Luke Platt walks on. He's sitting in front of me on the plane. I'm getting the leg swings in. This is only the seven-hour one, staying mobile. Watched. I went Coen Brothers for this flight. First, that one with all the actors. I thought that was pretty funny, the communist actors. I already watched it before. And then a classic, No Country for Old Men. I'm happy with my movie choices. What do you run with? And the last person I've seen, Wendy's team, Justin Langer, now Luke Platt, we're on the same flight. But we did it right. Said hello at the start. Then you got to have the flight to yourself. Then you reconvene at the end. Um, but now I've got to find my connection. He's got to do his connection. We both have the most. Where are you going? Two iconic Australians, they just went and Luke Platt. Uh, I'm off to Andorra. Andorra, then what? Altitude? Then? Altitude, Tenerife, Paris, San Remo, everything, mate. So you're not going to see home until June? No, I may as well just take my suitcase <laughs> yeah. till after the Giro. <laughs> the Odyssey continues off the 24 hour flight. And now I had to drop my bag, go collect my bag, say bye to Plappy, go out the terminal, or not the terminal, go out, drop the bags that left luggage, the big bags. Now I've got to go back in and I've got to get this a flight to Amsterdam. So then I've got to get a train. Everything had been good up to this point. Things started to go downhill a little bit here. Delayed flight. Luckily, Valenciana was on the TV randomly in the airport in Barcelona, which is always good. They finally got on the flight to Amsterdam, and I was really flagging here. Flight was delayed, and then it was the longest taxi I've ever seen in my life. That's where we did 20Ks on the tarmac. I got And then I got to get to the train because Grisha's picking me up. So I'm hustling to the train station. Don't know where it is. Let's hope we can make it. We got 10 minutes. Uh, I think we'll be right. I already got tickets. But I look like I've had a great weekend in Amsterdam already by the start of the state of my eyes, but I just arrived, unfortunately. To add to confusion, the platform or spur for the trains is like dynamic. So the, the train was at... 746 but said it'll depart from platform one or two then add to the fact that everyone in the netherlands is way too tall so i can't see anything on the screens ahead of me and so at this point i don't even know if i'm on the right train i think i'm heading south i can't get my sim card to work to contact grisha or check where i am but i get off in den boss i'm seeing bikes and i'm trying to find grisha i gotta find grisha he's parked somewhere here picking me up in the version of car Oh, it's fucking freezing. It's like four degrees and I don't have any warm clothes and I've just been in the tropics, so here we are. I see Grisha over there. Grisha's picked me up very kindly. Ciao. <laughs> and it's time for un petit pied pour le jumbo, I think, before meetings tomorrow. Ciao. Had a snack, not so little, bitter ballot, first time trying them, i.e. Dutch croquettes. End, big journey, day one. Woke up, no jet lag. I've played a blinder here. Eight in the morning, still pretty dark. But you know what? I'm loving it. Actually fresh. It feels, to feel fresh on my face, I haven't felt that for three months. Uh, so it's kind of a nice change. <laughs> Actually the cold, I, I think I prefer it. Meetings wrapped up for the day. Time to watch the finish of Saudi Tour where Cockard 31 and Merlier jumped with a million meters to go. Let's have a look that I guess the interesting parts of the service course, because like, you know, service course for every team will have meeting rooms, which meeting rooms look like a meeting room. But here is the interesting parts, I guess. Uh, there's like a Cervelo stand. There's like a stand for all the, the main sponsors, Cervelo, AGU, uh, Visma, SRAM, the bikes, tax uh, as well. AGU is the kit supplier, and yeah, it's interesting going to the service course, particularly seeing some of the, the older bikes and the older kits, which I'd forgotten about. And yeah, like there's uh, the lineup of the bikes here. There's a new kit. What do you think of the kit? They're going to have to change that for the Tour de France, obviously, but I don't know how they're going to get away with it for the Dauphiné and Paris-Nice, with that, which have yellow jerseys as well, because like, it really is yellow and looks like the ASO yellow jerseys. Um, the new paint job, I think, on the bike looks pretty good, but this is equipped with Shimano, this bike, or is that last year's paint job? Uh, I can't remember, but yeah, that's got a Shimano equipped bike, and they're obviously on, they've been on SRAM the last couple of years. Here's just the GC Coos, the Trilogy bikes lined up uh, on the side. These will probably be here for a while. Got the GC Coos and the Trilogy sticker. I'm not sure if that is his actual race bike. Probably it was the one he used in Madrid, because uh, it's, it's got a power meter and everything. 
And then there's the yellow Jonas bike, which has the race number still on. So I'm pretty sure he would have actually used that in the Paris stage uh, with, I think that's got the J-A-U-N-S, Jonas accents. And there's Roglic pink bike from the Giro. All my size, or at least Roglic and Vingegaard's are. So maybe, maybe I'll have them for a cafe spin. Here's a wall of jerseys. Uh, like all the national champs jerseys, polka dot jerseys, race leaders jerseys from major races. And then the middle row, I think, is all the jerseys throughout the years from Blanco through Belkin, Lotto, Yumbo, uh, Yumbo Visma, and now obviously Visma, Lisa Bike, as well as like the main Tour de France jerseys. And then there's a, a SRAM stand with with the SRAM gearing. And in all the meeting rooms, is basically all the random trophies. And you think, oh, well, how, how many trophies can there be? Well, I forget that you get like a trophy if you're leading the jersey classification in any stage of a race. And there's like trophies for Quatre Jours de Dunkirk, massive trophy. Here's, I think, Roglic TT bike from the Olympics or afterwards because it's got it's gold on it. But the thing was crazy. Look at the saddle. I was like, this ain't real, right? This is just a replica or something for the model. They're like, Mathieu was like, that's the real saddle. So thin, all carbon, looks crazy uncomfortable. I had a few jerseys I had to pick up as well that uh, couldn't be delivered when I was in Andorra when I was overseas and got returned. So I was like, I'll just pick them up from the service course on this trip. Workday done. So obviously the first thing we do is just go straight to a Yumbo supermarket. It's just, I'm told this is what people in the Netherlands do and I've yet to see anything different. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the bitterballer and Gouda, I think the, the Reuter stuff that they sprinkle on bread is like the most famous Dutch food, not sure. It's crazy to me how different all the supermarkets are. Like you go to a different country, I love it. You go and like, what the hell is this? Different brands, like even, where is the Barilla? Pasta, it's just, you know, it's all different. It's a learning experience. The sun is going down. I've only brought summer running gear. It's like seven degrees. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna try to do some some laps just to keep moving. It's just on the borderline where, like, I don't really have a route. I'm trying to get to somewhere, but it's too cold to stop and even look at the map. I gotta, especially when you're in zone two, Inigo San Milan specials, even on the Visma. You know, Visman trip, sorry. On a bike path, don't know if this is illegal, but we keep moving. The sun is set now. I'm getting properly cold, but it is what it is. I can't feel my ears, but we crank out that 5k. Got dinner now with the team. But I just got up and got hit with the biggest wave of tiredness from the jet lag, I don't know, but I shouldn't have laid down after my run. I was watching, looking up some of the results from the racing today and <sighs> I'm finished. But shouldn't have had a snack bar either, I'm just, <sighs> but we'll see how I go. Team dinner was good. Oh, it was like the team working on the project that I had to go to the service course or ate the high performance center uh, for. It's just cool. What was crazy? Chris was like, yeah, Dutch people st sit outside and eat outside, whatever the weather temperature. It was like four degrees. Everyone's eating al fresco. And I had a pretty good meal, actually. I rate my choices. Although these mints are like the biggest mints I've ever seen. They are a choking hazard. That's the meeting's done. Now off to Rotterdam, thanks to Mathieu, feeling pretty good, then to Schiphol, then back to Barcelona. I'm recording this audio afterwards, obviously, but I've I've forgotten all about this part of the trip because I was so tired at this point. And Mathieu pointed out the Feyenoord, Feyenoord Stadium because uh, he's a fan of them because he's from Rotterdam. So we had to drive past there. The subway tickets, though, look at this brutalist architecture. The subway tickets, €4.50 Euros for a single journey. I know it's probably cheaper if you have the card rather than like a one-off paper ticket, but still, I was like, damn, bit exy. And then I was freezing at this point. I don't know if it was the wind or the 
humidity or something, but I was, I was being really sooky at this point, and I was like, I just need to get home to Andorra, get a bit of mountain sun on me. Holy dooly, nightmare trip from Den Bosch to fucking Schiphol Airport. That took 10 times longer than it should have. But we're here now, it's not like I was doing anything else anyway. And uh, I'll fly in the morning at 10. And so, in the old Ibis, um, how thick the bed is, we don't know. But when you're this tired, it doesn't really matter. But I was so cold. <laughs> the, the, the thick jacket, that gets a proper coat. But I was freezing. The wind gets through your hairs. Let's see if we can get a jog in. I think I'm gonna do half an hour jog at whatever pace. Flew into Barcelona, no problems, but then the electricity cut out where I needed to pick my bags up, missed my bus, but bright side was I got to watch the Saudi tour mount top finish. Saudi tour watched and coffee drunk. Just walking to the bus now to Andorra. And that was basically, well, this is the end of my trip home, waiting for the bus. There were loads of people, and Americans, and they, they disappeared when the bus came, so I don't really know what happened. They all had skis, though, so I don't know where else they'd be going to ski. You can't ski in Barcelona. And then the long bus trip uh, up the mountain into the Pyrenees home, no snow, though. It's been way too warm, obviously. Like, it's still a month left of winter, and even up, up at, like, 2,000 meters, there's no snow, which is pretty scary. And, I mean, it's nice, I guess, I'm sitting here with the sun blazing on me right now, but these people who've come come to ski, I don't know what they'll be skiing on. Oh, I'm back, I'm back. 